What's up, y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. Now, today I have the brand new Ego E-Steer here for you, and I will tell you right up front, this is a sponsored review. I am working with Ego, but I promise you that as you see dozens and dozens of videos coming out on this mower over the next couple, two, three weeks, I'm hoping that mine will be much different because I'm gonna go deep on this bad dog and show you the things that I think are cool, that I think are different, that make it unique, and then you can decide from that if you wanna get one. So with that, let's get right into this little uh, basic walk around here. So I guess starting off here, we might as well talk about the most obvious difference here, and that is that this zero turn, it doesn't have a traditional lap bar like you've seen on other zero turns. This actually has a steering wheel that kind of looks like a cross between like an F1 car and Knight Rider. Looks like Darth Vader's bathroom. Super cool, and then you also have a gas pedal or an accelerator pedal, I guess, not a gas pedal, an accelerator pedal. <laughs> which makes this mower extremely leisurely. In other words, you can have a comfortable, leisurely mow because of this setup, but there's even a little more to it than that. Now there's three drive modes. It's got control, standard, and sport. Basically what those do, uh, the control mode, it makes this a little less responsive as well as the accelerator. Standard mode, a little more responsive on both, and then sport mode, extremely responsive. So that's what those drive modes do. Again, I'm really stressing that this is a leisurely mow here. They're giving you all the different ways to dial in your mow so that you get max enjoyment. The other thing is that this has is cruise control, right? I don't know if that, that exists on any other mower, but basically you set it in cruise control and now you don't even have to put your foot on the accelerator anymore. You can just control how fast or how slow it goes by using the turtle and rabbit buttons. So if you're somebody that's got wide open spaces, put this bad dog in cruise control and uh, it literally is the kit car. All you gotta do is steer it. You even have a free hand for a beverage over by there. I'm gonna put this thing to the test. Be my guest. There's also a different way that you actually have to drive these. Now, let me just show you here, this traditional lap bar zero turn, what a lot of people wanna do is they get to the end of a run and they just wanna hammer it around and turn. Well, if you do that, you can actually end up scarring the turf because that inside wheel will turn and scar the turf there. So what you have to do then with a traditional lap bar zero turn is actually do a three point turn at the end of every run. So you run down, hit it a little to the left, a little to the rear, and then straighten it back out and do a three-point turn, and that keeps you from scarring the turf. Again, a little bit of learning curve there, a little something different, a little bit of extra effort required. Now, with the steering wheel version here, the E-Steer, all of that's not needed. Now you can just go to the end of the run, do a slight little swing out, and turn on a dime. And they even call it that in their advertising. They say that this E-Steer can turn on a dime. And so you can see me doing it here. And yes, it does work that way. It's a lot easier. If you don't like doing the three-point turn, just go up to the end, swing out a bit, make your turn, turn on a dime, back and forth. And again, much more leisurely rather than active. Active turning, active, active everything, right? This, more leisurely, more chill, more fun. And yeah, more fun. So I've been talking about how easy it is to drive and all that, but there's also the comforts here that you can set up. So obviously, you know, you can move the seat back or forward, depending how much leg bend you like, that kind of thing. And then there is an adjustment here that gives you a little more spring in the seat, a little more bounce, or maybe you prefer a little stiffer seat, but then also the steering wheel itself can go up or back, right? So some of you, you might like to kind of be up on it a little bit like this, like, a, like that F1 driver, or others of you, maybe maybe you kind of prefer to take her all the way back and take it all the way out there and kind of do the old lean back. You don't even need the armrest. You can kind of hang out the side if you want, you know, however you want. So you got a lot of options here <laughs> to, to be able to drive this thing and set it to your comfort. And that's really what it's all about. All right, the next thing people ask about is runtime, batteries, that kind of stuff. So it comes with four 10 amp hour batteries. So 40 amp hours, that'll cut up to two and a half acres. And it does have a quick charge time to recharge is only two hours. You do have two extra ports though, if you wanted to throw in some extra batteries or you could use it like I do, which is I've got some smaller batteries for the hand tools. I just throw those in there and use this as my overall charger now. Now, one of the other things that people will ask about when it comes to battery equipment is can you get it wet? And so I did some research here and let's do that. Let's talk a little bit now about ingress protection ratings and how they apply to the east ear. So there's a couple things you need to think about when it comes to getting the mower wet. You have four electric motors here. You have one powering each blade because it's got two blades, so that's two motors. And then you have one powering each rear wheel. So that's two more 
electric motors, four total. And those are what you don't want to be blasting with water, as well as you have, you know, buttons and things on the steering wheel and over on the side console. You're not going to want to blast those with water. But what does that really mean? Blast with water is not a technical term. Well, let's go now and understand ingress protection ratings and how they relate to this mower. So the IEC or International Electro Technical Commission, they've developed ingress protection or IP ratings. And what those do is they grade the resistance of an enclosure against the intrusion of dust or liquids. Now, in the case of the E-Steer here, we're not really concerned about dust being an electric or battery powered piece of equipment. It's water that I mostly get asked about. And the E-Steer here, it has an IP rating of four. Now, there are nine total ratings, zero to eight. And of course, if you have a zero, that means the tool is rated for no water protection at all. Okay, now an IP rating of one or two means that the tool is protected against falling raindrops, whether those are vertical or, or at an angle. Now an IP rating of three says that no harm will come from the tool if water is sprayed from any direction up to 60 degrees. Bro. All right, now an IP rating of four means that the tool is protected from splashing water that might come in from any direction. <laughs> hey, real quick before we go any further, Nick, let's, let's make sure we, we hose this thing pretty good. Let's make sure we didn't break it. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. All right. So how does that IP4 rating translate to the real world here? Well, they even tell you in the manual, you don't want to blast this off with a hose. Don't put your aqua thumb on it. But if it gets left out in the rain here and there, you're pulling a trailer, gets rain on, it's going to be just fine. If the grass is wet, it's going to be fine. But really, they just recommend that when you clean it, you just use a blower. Maybe you towel it off with a diaper. That's kind of what I would do. Put a little, little extra shine on there. But uh, you're going to be fine. You just, you just don't want to be blasting it with water. That's really what all of that means. I, I went down a big rabbit hole. To give you an idea, an iPhone is actually rated at an IP8 on the water side. So that'll give you an idea there. You can pretty much go in a pool with that. We're not taking this in a pool. And as far as dust ingress, it's not even a concern here because we got tons of dust here. So they don't even rate it for that. All right, next, I guess I should mention cut quality, right? That is pretty much the most important thing. So uh, I've been cutting the Zoysia here at 1.5 inches, and that's the lowest that this mower will go. And it looks great. Incredible cut quality, probably the best zero turn cut quality I've ever seen. And it's actually the same on my St. Augustine grass that I've been cutting at four and a half inches, which is the tallest this will go. Same thing, impeccable cut. I mean, just almost unbelievable how good it cuts. So Ego has definitely mastered that with this 42 inch deck, the dual blade. They've done a great job there. The side discharge kicks everything out real nice. And again, incredible cut quality, 100%. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the Ego app because there's some diagnostic things you can get in there, some information that might be kind of cool, but also there's something you can do with the daytime running lamps that I think, well, I wanna see what it does. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the app and I have to add the tool and scan the QR code, which is right down there in the foot pan. So I'm gonna hit the add tool button and go right down here and scan. There it is. So it's uh, go to my tools. There we go. And there we go, there's my Z6. Now what I gotta do is hook up the Bluetooth. All right, so what I gotta do is just hit the button one time. And what that does is it activates the Bluetooth and then I hit Bluetooth on here and it says, the device is connected. Do you want to dis... The device is connected. All right, so we're actually connected now. And the next thing I can do is click into the device. And I get some readings here already. Uh, battery level is currently 46%. And you can see their running speed and blade speed. So we tested that and it does. It picks up on the RPMs when you go up and down on the dial there because you can change your blade speed and also running speed when we went ran it in the street. You can see it got up to like six, seven miles per hour. So the app's a little bit behind on that. It doesn't, it's not like real time, but it's still kind of cool data to look at. And then it gives you each level of your battery in the compartment. And then here's the cool part. So let's go now to the daytime running lights. So currently we have them just in the on position. So I'll just show you what those look like. We'll turn the unit on here. And the daytime running lights should have come on in the front. There they are. So you can just see, this is, I mean, they look cool. Nice LEDs right there, but there's something you can do in the app. You change this in the app to the running position. 
And now they do this cool like Knight Rider kit thing. I can, I can hear that going <laughs> like kit. So I'm almost wondering if somebody over at Ego was a Knight Rider fan because I can tell you that this steering wheel reminds me of Knight Rider and definitely that little light display. So that's something pretty cool you can do in the app, especially if you're somebody who likes to mow at night, get a little bit more attention, let everybody know you're getting dominated with that light show over by there. Okay, one last thing I want to talk to you all about, and this is something that you may not know. It, it relates to the app, and I don't know if you know, but uh, all riding lawnmowers, zero turns, they have a key. Now, most people, they never take the key out. I know I never do. It's just always in there. Uh, however, there may be a time, maybe you have young kids at home that may be curious to jump on this when you're at work and you don't want them to do that for a safety issue, or maybe you live in an area where there's crime and so you don't want to leave this out, you have it on a trailer. So you take the key out and now essentially the unit won't operate. Uh, but that can be, you know, I don't want to put that on my key ring. I could lose that. I got to store it somewhere now. It's just another, you know, small thing I got to deal with. Well, when you have the app and it's hooked up, the app actually works as a remote key. So you can see how this can be a safety feature for sure. So right now I'll put the key in and the app will pick up and it says, there it is, physical key detected. So now I could just start the mower and go. But if I pull the key out, the app, the app automatically detects remote key. All I have to do is unlock and now I can start the unit up. There we go, see, no key in and I'm ready to go without the key. I'm Alan Hain, the Lawn Care Nut. Hope this video has been helpful to you. Leave me your comments and questions below and I'll see you in the lawn.